2020 has been one hell of a year for cryptocurrency. Bitcoin reached its all-time highs. The DeFi space has grown exponentially. Institutional adoption of cryptocurrencies has surged. Ethereum 2.0 has prepared for launch. And all of this in the middle of a global pandemic with record unemployment and upheaval. <sighs> to paraphrase secret network founder Tor Bear, this is all thanks to one simple factor. 2020 has made millions of people around the world aware of the weakness of traditional currencies and the issues baked into our current financial systems. Given this fact, 2021 looks like it's going to be a continuation of cryptocurrency's current trends of growth, adoption, and also regulatory pushback as it becomes a tangible contender to the status quo. So today, I'm going to give you my top 10 cryptocurrency predictions for 2021 and why I think they will come true. Before I give you my yearly forecast, I need to break out my disclaimer umbrella so I don't get soaked by lawsuits. I am not a financial advisor, and nothing in this video should be considered financial or investment advice. I am Guy. Yes, that's my name. If you're new here, it's nice to meet you. Here at the Bureau, I crank out crypto content faster than the Fed prints money. Cryptocurrencies, exchanges, DeFi protocols, NFTs, trading tutorials, and much more. Take your pick, they're all my shtick. If cryptocurrency makes your world go round, then subscribe to the channel to become a citizen of Planet Coin Bureau. Be sure to ping that notification bell so you don't miss any important updates from your benevolent overlord. And speaking of benevolent, I've left timestamps at the bottom of this video to enhance your viewing experience. Feel free to skip around to the predictions which interest you the most. For you premium tubers out there, any links I point to during this video will be left in the description. You're welcome. All right, that's enough introduction. Let's see what my crystal ball has to say about cryptocurrency in 2021. My first cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that we will see new all-time highs for most crypto coins and tokens. Bitcoin has already surpassed its all-time highs and the general consensus is that it's only a matter of time before altcoins follow suit. Now, my personal evidence for this is the gradual decline in Bitcoin dominance over the past few years. Although Bitcoin dominance has risen slightly in recent months, when the bull market really starts to kick off, I think that downward trend will continue as inexperienced traders will flood the market. Now, I reckon most of them will get spooked by Bitcoin's price tag and go searching for what they believe to be the best alternative injecting billions of dollars into the altcoin market. Even before the retail dam is broken, altcoins will see gains whenever Bitcoin starts to trade sideways for too long. This generally motivates opportunistic investors to go wandering through the wild west of altcoins in search of some short-term gains. Now, I know many of you are probably itching for a 2021 Bitcoin price prediction right about now, so here it is. I think it is very likely we will see a 100k Bitcoin by the end of 2021. This is less than a 4x move from its current valuation, which is very reasonable in my opinion. This price point is also within the bounds of what the stock to flow model is predicting. Now say what you will about this indicator, but it seems to have been pretty darn accurate so far. If you're wondering how high your favorite altcoin could go by the end of 2021, well, I recommend checking out my video on how to plan your ultimate altcoin exit strategy by hitting the link in the top right corner here. My second cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that regulators are going to continue hunting down cryptocurrency projects. The recent lawsuit against Ripple by the SEC is just the tip of the iceberg. That said, regulators have already been actively duking it out with the crypto projects since 2017 namely the SEC and FinCEN. This was because many of the tokens sold during cryptocurrency ICOs around that time were considered by regulators to be securities akin to stocks in a company and not digital currencies. In case you didn't know, buying, selling and trading securities involves a lot of red tape for both exchanges and traders. Handling securities without reporting to the SEC or working within the bounds of their guidelines is illegal in the United States. 
Most cryptocurrency exchanges do not have the licensing or the capacity to be compliant with these regulations, which is why many of them delisted XRP following the announcement of the SEC suit against Ripple. For the cryptocurrency projects that managed to launch their mainnets and release their own native utility tokens before regulators came knocking, their punishment was usually just to cough up the money they'd raised when their tokens were still securities, aka any money raised during their ICOs. However, there continues to be a handful of high-profile cryptocurrency projects that have coins and tokens that the SEC could consider to be securities. There is a handy infographic that I found on the Monero subreddit that shows you where a few of the top cryptocurrencies stand in this regard. The data in this infographic actually comes from the findings of the Crypto Ratings Council. Now, do not take what you see here as gospel truth. The site explicitly states that, quote, the ratings and other CRC work product are not endorsed by any asset development team or foundation, any regulator or any other third party. That said, something tells me that regulators are going to consult this data when they go looking for blood. And remember that even the mere announcement of a lawsuit will be enough to gut a cryptocurrency and get it removed from US exchanges. As you'll see, the CRC's list of cryptocurrency ratings is quite limited and also outdated, meaning you're going to have to do the legwork to figure out if the cryptocurrencies you are invested in are at risk of being deemed securities by the SEC. This is done using something called the Howey test, which involves four criteria that must all be met for an asset to be designated a security. For most cryptocurrencies, there is just one criterion which makes or breaks their designation as a security. And that's if, if the expectations of profit are being driven by the actions of an identifiable third party. There is no definitive third party you can point to that's driving expectations of profit from cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. They are, quote, sufficiently decentralized and are therefore currencies in the eyes of US regulators. Now, I strongly recommend taking the time to sit down and figure this out for each cryptocurrency you hold besides Bitcoin and Ethereum. You can use my recent video about the XRP suit to help you by clicking in the top right of the screen. My third cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that regulatory clarity about cryptocurrency is going to drive an incredible amount of adoption. Institutional investors hate regulatory uncertainty, and cryptocurrency has no shortage of that. However, there have so far been two important regulatory milestones that have made cryptocurrency a friendlier asset to institutional investors. The first regulatory milestone was the designation of Bitcoin and Ethereum as currencies by the SEC, which took place almost three years ago. The second milestone for institutional adoption took place earlier this year, and that was when the OCC gave federally chartered banks the green light to custody cryptocurrencies. Now, I reckon that this is what was necessary for companies like PayPal and MicroStrategy to feel comfortable handling Bitcoin. If you want more information about which institutional investors are accumulating and how much, I have a recent video for you folks, and that's in the top right. I would argue that the upcoming Coinbase IPO is a similar sort of regulatory milestone to the two I just noted. Institutional investors will be able to dip their toes in the cryptocurrency space by proxy, by investing in Coinbase stock, and they could be motivated to start dabbling in crypto directly, especially if Coinbase stock performs well. This gradual increase in regulatory clarity and the comfort it brings is why I think a Bitcoin ETF is on the horizon though I'm not quite sure we'll see one by the end of 2021. My fourth cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that any regulatory crackdowns on cryptocurrency are going to supercharge innovation in the cryptocurrency space. The first possible crackdown involves the Stablecoin Act. Stablecoins like USDT and USDC are considered by many to be the Achilles heel of cryptocurrency. After all, stablecoins are how you can protect your gains without cashing out and most of the daily trading volume on the crypto market involves stablecoins. If regulators were to limit their use or availability through regulation, it could have a devastating effect on the crypto market in the short term. However, this would supercharge the development of decentralized stablecoins like DAI and algorithmic stablecoins like Ampleforth, which would eventually fill that void. On the other hand, I do think that stablecoin issuers like Tether need more oversight 
given that it's questionable whether they have the fiat required to back the USDT they have printed. I do wonder, though, how all this stablecoin printing impacts on the markets. It'd be great if there was a video about it. Hmm. Anywho, I hope that regulators will find a middle ground with the Stablecoin Act in 2021, and I hope some similar middle ground is found in FinCEN's attitudes towards self-hosted wallets and transaction reporting. To briefly recap, FinCEN wants cryptocurrency exchanges to verify the identities of any wallet addresses being withdrawn to or deposited from. Both demands are a little bit ridiculous, but as Andreas Antonopoulos pointed out, they amount to a stimulus plan for decentralized exchanges and privacy coins. This will consequently see a surge in demand and development if these regulations are too extreme. My fifth cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that more blockchain voting will be used in elections. Governance was a hot topic in crypto in 2020, and it feels like almost every crypto project became a decentralized autonomous organization this year. Even though this seems to have been a way of sidestepping the sort of regulatory issues I mentioned earlier, it has inadvertently turned the cryptocurrency space into a hotbed for testing different forms of voting and governance. Although this seems to have been a little too late for the 2020 US election, many cryptocurrency projects now have functional prototypes for a truly transparent and fair election. Some crypto projects, such as Waves, have already worked with governments to pilot blockchain voting with apparent success. Waves subsequently made their blockchain voting platform public, something which unfortunately did not receive much publicity. Cardano also seems to be eager to get in on the action, with Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson announcing in October that Cardano is building blockchain voting infrastructure that the Cardano Foundation hopes to sell to foreign governments in the coming years. Now, I for one certainly hope for some adoption here because private blockchains don't count when it comes to free and fair, as far as I'm concerned. My sixth cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that privacy oriented cryptocurrency projects are going to start achieving some serious user adoption. While privacy coins tend to be used more by people on the dark web, as blockchain analysis firms become more and more efficient in tracking transactions on public blockchains, and become the fifth branch of the government, you might just find yourself holding Monero for more than just speculative reasons. And it's not just you and me that's going to want more privacy either. Believe it or not, one of the setbacks to cryptocurrency adoption has been the transparency that comes with their publicly viewable blockchains. Once upon a time, the privacy-preserving element in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum came from the fact that your identity is not tied to the wallet addresses you use and there were no specialized firms which actively tried to track your identity through your behavior on the network. Today, a fair amount of people who hold cryptocurrency know how to use a blockchain explorer like Etherscan, and many of them could probably engage in the same type of surveillance as a blockchain tracking firm, albeit not to the same degree. Still, many institutions are not comfortable with the idea that anyone can see how much cryptocurrency they're holding. Similarly, Outside of decentralized exchanges and lending protocols, transparency is not always necessary for decentralized applications, and you could easily argue that some applications require more privacy than others. Consider that even though companies like Facebook do a poor job of handling your data, at least that data isn't publicly viewable to anyone with an internet connection. This is why tech giants like Microsoft are opting to use closed-source clones of Ethereum like Quorum instead of using the real OG. However, these private blockchains are nowhere near as efficient as public blockchains, mainly because they haven't actually been stress tested with millions of users and transactions in a dynamic environment. I think that institutions are itching to work with public blockchains for this reason, but they need a middle ground between total privacy and total transparency before they engage with them. Now, one project that has found this middle ground is Secret Network, whose founder I quoted at the beginning of this video. In Secret Network, all transactions made using their native SCRT coin are publicly viewable, whereas any tokens generated on the network are completely private, along with the decentralized applications you can use the tokens in. Now, I'll leave a link to an article about Secret Network in the description if you want to learn more.
My seventh cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that Facebook's Libra currency, which recently rebranded to DM, will launch but will not achieve any meaningful adoption. In case you missed the memo, DM is scheduled to launch as early as January 2021, depending on when they get the green light from financial regulators in Switzerland, where the DM Association is based. Before you Google how to buy DM, there isn't much point because DM will initially be a stable coin token pegged to the US dollar. Eventually, there will be other DM tokens pegged to other fiat currencies, as well as the DM token, which will be backed by a basket of fiat currencies to be determined by the World Bank and World Economic Forum. Oof. Even though the DM network will likely be accessible through Facebook and Instagram by the end of 2021, there are three things that will limit its mass adoption. The first issue is that to mint DM tokens, you must buy them with fiat using a verified merchant. Now, considering that it will be easier just to buy what you want using your own native fiat currency than use an intermediary process like this one, I reckon most people will just opt to do that. The second issue is that to even hold DM tokens, you must hand over KYC documentation. Again, for most people, this will not be worth the effort, and the KYC documentation required may not even be available in the developing countries DM is targeting. Finally, last I checked, the DM testnet was processing just three transactions per second, down from its average of six transactions per second just over a month ago. There is simply no way it will be able to handle the sort of traffic it wants to support, and I can guarantee that the network has also not been stress tested to the extent that it needs to be. When something goes wrong, and I think it will, the few companies which didn't ditch the project in 2019 will probably head to greener pastures, the same way DM's founder recently did. If you want to learn more about DM, then, yep, you guessed it, top right. My eighth cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that the topic of quantum computing will take center stage in the crypto space. As we all know, the current pandemic has basically dominated the news headlines for the entire year. This is unfortunate because there are a lot of other things that have happened that you should probably know about. Like, for example, the Pentagon admitting that they are in possession of, quote, off-world vehicles not made on this earth. No. I'm not joking. I'll leave a link to that story in the description. And yes, it's from a reputable source. I digress. The leaps in the development of quantum computers over this past year is another topic that has likely flown under your radar, even though it's one of the biggest perceived threats to the cryptocurrency space, according to a poll by Plan B, the creator of the aforementioned stock to flow model. I don't have the time to go too in-depth on how quantum computing works, so I'll leave a couple of resources for you in the video description. But, as it relates to crypto, the threat is twofold. First, quantum computers could take over a proof-of-work blockchain like Bitcoin's in an instant. This is because proof-of-work cryptocurrency mining essentially involves using an insane amount of computing power to solve mathematical equations which verify transactions on the network. Quantum computers are 100 trillion times faster than supercomputers, which are themselves hundreds of thousands of times faster than regular computers. A single quantum computer could take over more than 51% of Bitcoin's mining power and manipulate transaction histories to their liking. Second, quantum computers could crack the encryption of your cryptocurrency wallet using your public key and steal your coins and tokens. It is worth noting that this threat is not limited to cryptocurrency wallets either. The encryption technology used by banks could also be cracked in minutes using a quantum computer. This means your money wouldn't really be safe anywhere if some serious cyber criminals got their hands on one. That said, quantum computers are nowhere close to being in the hands of the public and will probably not be for quite some time. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that a government couldn't force Google, a company with a quantum computer, to disarm the cryptocurrency space if it gets too big. Thankfully, I think that is very, very unlikely. In any case, the cryptocurrency space isn't just going to wait until quantum computers become more available before taking any precautions. There are already a few quantum-resistant cryptocurrencies in circulation, and I suspect more will emerge in 2021, along with initial proposals by developers for quantum-resistant tech 
for larger cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. My ninth cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that layer two scaling solutions for Ethereum will become more important than ever. This is because it's very unlikely that Ethereum 2.0 will be released by the end of 2021. And even if it is, it will take months and possibly years to migrate all the tokens and decentralized applications from Ethereum to Ethereum 2.0. Until that happens, Ethereum is going to need some way of supporting the incoming flood of users and transactions this bull market will bring. A few layer twos that come to mind are the OMG network, Loopring, and of course, Injective Protocol. I've covered all three of these in depth, and I'll leave links to those videos in the description. If you're rusty on your layer two lingo, the TLDR is that these protocols bundle hundreds, sometimes thousands of transactions off the Ethereum blockchain and periodically submit them all at once as a single transaction to the Ethereum blockchain. As a consequence, most layer twos can handle thousands of transactions per second, which is a huge upgrade from Ethereum's 15 transactions per second. That said, any serious errors with these scaling solutions or in Ethereum 2.0 during 2021 could see a large amount of money move into competitors like Cardano and Polkadot. In case you didn't know, Cardano's founder, Charles Hoskinson, is one of the co-founders of Ethereum, and so too is Polkadot's founder, Gavin Wood. My final cryptocurrency prediction for 2021 is that Coin Bureau will become the largest crypto YouTube channel, and it's all thanks to you. Your support over this past year has been nothing short of incredible, and there are no words in any language that could possibly articulate the extent of my gratitude. Time is a valuable thing, and it means so much to me and my team that you have chosen to spend some of your time watching content on this channel. So, why do I think the Bureau will clinch the top spot on crypto YouTube? Well, not to name names, but there are way too many crypto YouTube channels out there that peddle nothing more than hype and hopium. Though I too partake in hype from time to time, I reckon I do my darndest to do the research that few are willing to do and bring you the facts in a way that makes it easy for you to use your own judgment about any given crypto project or topic. Now, most importantly, I have no strings attached. I don't run ads on my videos. I only rarely accept occasional sponsorships from companies and products I truly believe in. And I do not shill cryptocurrencies. As you can see, the proof is in the pudding. The Coin Bureau has seen exponential growth over the past year. And if this momentum continues into 2021, it will be the largest cryptocurrency YouTube channel by the end of next year. Someone go long on Guy. But seriously, I'm super excited for 2021, and I hope you'll all stick around for many more years to come. After all, I'm going to need your help to build up the new YouTube channels I may or may not be creating this coming year. If you enjoyed this video, then I reckon that means you should hit up that like button. Go on. If you're planning to stick around the channel in 2021, be sure to subscribe and ping that notification bell so you start the new year on the right foot. If this content was just not enough, then be sure to check out my dedicated socials page. It has links to my Telegram, Instagram, and Twitter exclusively for Coin Bureau insiders. That's all in the description below. And while you're down there, if you have some leftover Christmas cash, then why not consider supporting the channel by buying one of my official Coin Bureau t-shirts on the official Coin Bureau merch store, which again, you can find in the description. And for the cherry on top, you may as well subscribe to my weekly newsletter. Consider it to be the go-to source you can use for everything crypto, market insights, crypto tips, tricks, and a whole bunch of other crunchy crypto content that you won't get anywhere else. All of that goodness, again, is down below. That's it, folks. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, stay crypto.